Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm going to go through question number five from June 2019, International A Level Statistics 1, the S1 paper. A uh, question about discrete random variables. So it says the discrete random variable X represents the score when a biased spinner is spun. So the spinner is not equally likely to land on any particular number. It basically is biased, so it's more likely to land on some numbers than others. The probability, the probability distribution of X is given by this table here. So most of the probabilities here looks like they're unknowns. P, A, and Q are probabilities. So we got to first find the expected value of X. Now, when you see something like this, you first of all probably expect that the expected value of X here is going to give you something in terms of P and Q. However, let's see what happens. So expected value of X. Now, the expected value of something is like the mean when you've got a probability distribution. And you multiply the score by its probability. Okay, so here you're going to do minus 2 times P. So you have minus 2 times P plus minus 1 times P plus 0 times Q plus 2 times 2 times a half. Oh, sorry, 2 times a quarter plus 3 times P. So you end up here with minus 2P and minus another P and plus 0 plus a half and plus 3P. So what you'll notice happens here is the expected value of X becomes, you're going to have minus 3P plus 3P, they cancel out, you'll be left with a half. So the expected value of X is a half, 0 0.5, a half, whatever you want to call it. Now, then it says, given that the variance of X is 2.5, find the value of P. Okay, so we know the variance of X is 2.5, and we've got to find the value of P. I've just brought this table down here, so I can see what's happening. Okay, so first of all, the variance of X is given by, if you remember, it's the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. So the mean of the square, so you've got to find e x, the expected value of x squared. So you're going to have the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared, which is the mean we found there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another, another section here for x squared. So minus 2 squared is 4, minus 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 2 squared is 4, and 3 squared is 9. And the expected value of x squared is basically similar to the expected value of x. You just multiply x squared by its probability. So it's 4 times p and plus 1 times p plus 0 times q plus 4 times a quarter, which is 1, plus 9 times p. So you see we're going to get here 9p, that's going to be 14p plus 1 is the expected value of x squared. Okay, the expected value of x squared, so that's going to be the, this is, go, this is called the mean of the squares. So the variance of x is going to be the mean of the squares, which is 14p plus 1 minus the square of the mean, which is minus a half squared. Okay, so that's going to give you 14p um, plus 1 minus a half squared. Okay, so that's going to give you 14p plus, and that's going to be 0 0.75 plus 3 quarters, because that's going to be a quarter. 1 minus quarter is 3 quarters, so I'll put it as uh, 0 0.75. And we know that the variance of x is equal to 2.5. So we found the variance of x in terms of p. And we also know that the actual value of the variance of x is 2.5. So what we can say is 14p plus 0.75 is equal to 2.5. So we can say now 14p is equal to 2.5 minus 0.75. So we can work out what p is. p is going to be uh, 2.5 minus 0.75 divided by 14. So we can work out what that is. So you have here 2.5 minus minus 0 0.75, whoops, 0 0.75 divided by 14 gives us 1 eighth. So we now know that P is 1 eighth. Okay, so that's part B done. 
And then it says, hence find the value of Q. Okay, so to find the value of Q, what we should realize is all of these, they add up to 1. The probabilities have to add up to 1. Oops. So all the P's are 1 8th. Okay, so you're going to have 3 eighths plus a quarter plus Q equals 1. If you add all of these together, you have to get 1. Okay, so it says hence find the value of Q. So Q is equal to 1 minus, and you're going to have 3 eighths plus a quarter. 3 eighths plus a quarter. Okay, so that's 3 over 8 plus a quarter, which is 2 over 8. That gives you 5 over 8, so Q is equal to... Uh, 1 minus 5 over 8, which is 3 over 8. So Q is 3 eighths. So we now know what Q is as well. Q is 3 eighths. So we have all of the values. And you can see they all add up to 1, as they should. You're going to have that's 3, that's 5 eighths. Um, that, sorry, that's that's 5, 6 eighths plus 2 eighths, that's 8 eighths. So we got all the values there of um, the probabilities. So now we can go on to part C, part D, sorry. Now, part D, it says, Amar is invited to play a game with the spinner. The spinner is spun once, and X1 is the score on the spinner. If X1 is greater than zero, Amar wins the game. If X1 is equal to zero, Amar loses the game. If X is less than zero, X1 is less than zero, the spinner is spun again, and X2 is the score on this second spin. And if X1 plus X2 is greater than zero, Amar wins the game, otherwise Amar loses the game. Okay, so it sounds a bit complicated, but it's basically we want to find the probability that Amar wins the game. So the the way that he's going to win the game is if first first thing is if x1 is greater than zero. Okay, so the probability of x1 being greater than zero is basically the sum of these two, which is I'll just write this, this is like 2 over 8, so it's going to be 3 eighths. So that's one outcome which he's going to win the game. The other outcomes where he's going to win the game is if, basically, the, if x is less than 0, the spinner is spun again. And x plus 1, x1 plus x2 is greater than 0, Amar wins the game. Okay, so now, if the spinner... If the first throw is less than zero, then the spinner is spun again, okay? And x2 is the score on the second spin, okay? And if the sum of those two is greater than zero, so if the sum, if, if the first throw is less than zero, he has to spin again. If it's equal to zero, he loses the game. So we're not going to include that one. That's not included in the probability of winning. But if x1 is less than zero, then he's going to throw again. He's going to spin the thing again. And if the sum of... The first and the second throw is greater than zero, he wins the game. Okay, so what you can think about is this. Um, if the first, let's think of all the ways the first throw will be less than zero. So if x1 is less than zero, you can have uh, basically the first throw being minus two or minus one. Those are the two ways for the first throw to be less than zero. Okay, either you, he gets a minus two or he gets a minus one. Okay, those are the two ways to get less than zero. Now, if he gets less than zero, then the second, sp he's going to spin again. So then he's going to add to that score the second spin. Now, the second spin, for him to win the game, he has to have more than zero on his spinner. So if he, have, if he gets a minus two, the only way he's going to win after getting a minus two is if he gets a three for the second throw. But if he gets a minus one, then he can get more than zero if he gets a two on the second throw or if he gets a three on the second throw okay so that's if he gets a minus two on the first throw the only way he's going to win if he gets a plus if he gets a three on the second throw if he gets a minus one on the first row the only way he's going to win is if he gets a two on the second throw or if he gets a three on the second throw so i'm going to consider all of these probabilities here so getting a minus two is one over eight and then getting a 3 is 1 over 8. So that's 1 over 64. So that's another, that's one prob that's another probability of him winning. Okay, so that's one, one outcome which will cause him to win. So, so far we've got 3 over 8 is one outcome. That's if he gets greater than 0 on the first row. Then you've got to add to that 
the second outcome where he's going to win, which is he gets one, he gets a minus two, then he gets a three. That's another outcome. So you've got to add these two outcomes. But we've got to look at all the other outcomes as well. So the other, other outcomes where he's going to win is if he gets a minus one on the first throw, and then he gets a two on the second throw, that's going to be one over eight times one over four, which is like two over eight. Let's keep it with the same denominators. That's two over 64. And that's another outcome we've got to add to our result. And then the third outcome is if he gets a minus one in the first throw and then a three in the second throw. And that's going to be, again, one over eight times one over eight, which is one over 64. So basically for me to get the final answer, the probability that Amar wins is going to equal 3 over 8 plus 1 over 64 plus 2 over 64 plus 1 over 64, which gives you now this is times 8, 8, 8 to 64 times 8, that's 24 over 64. That's 24 over 64, 25, 27, 28 over 64. 28 over 64. And what goes into those numbers? Um, 7, 8, 7 does no. Let's have a look. 28 over 64. You've got 28 divided by 64, which gives us 7 over 16. That's 7 over 16 is the answer. That's a probability that Amar wins. I hope that was clear. Okay, so you got to think a bit carefully about these type of questions. There's different outcomes which will cause him to win, and you've got to consider each of those outcomes and add those outcomes together, add the probabilities of that those outcomes together. So one of the outcomes is that he gets great, greater than zero on the first row, he automatically wins. So that's one outcome we've got to consider. You've got to add to that the other outcomes. So the other outcome where he's going to win is the first row is less than zero. So if the first throw is a minus two, then he has to get a three to win. So one over eight first throw times one over eight second throw, that gives you one over 64. If he gets a minus one on the first row, there's two different ways. One of them, if he gets a minus one on the first row and then a two on the second throw, and the other one minus one on the first row and the three, second, three in the second row, he will, he will win in both those cases. So we got one over 64, 2 over 64, 1 over 64, and 3 over 8. We add all, all those, those are the probabilities of the different outcomes where he's going to win. So we have to add all those probabilities together to get the combined probability of him winning. Okay, now it says for part C, it says Amar does not want to lose the game. He says because the expected value of X is greater than 0, he will play the game. However, there's a problem here because the expected value of X is equal to a half that is the expected um, you know that's expected mean so that's basically um, people who play this game it's expected that they, they'll win it 50% of the time that's what it means okay but for Amar his probability okay is slightly different his probability is his the probability that Amar wins is equal to 7 over 16 and 7 over 16 is less than 0 0.5 so I would say no he shouldn't play the game he shouldn't play why okay because the probability try and be right nicely probability of him winning is less than the expected um, mean okay the expected mean okay the expected value of uh, him winning the expected value of that game um, being won the expected mean is 0 0.5 and his mean and his uh, probability is 7 over 16. And the expected mean is basically how um, likely it is the probability that somebody would win in general. And the probability of him winning is less than that. So therefore, I would advise him, no, I don't agree with him. Don't play because it's more likely you 
you're going to lose and you don't want to lose the game so if you probably if you're the probability of you losing is kind of like more li it's likely if you play this game because the probability of you winning is less than the expected mean okay so i hope that was clear that's the answer to this question number five and um if you would like to see other questions from this paper as i answer them they will be put in the playlist that appears over here if you want to see other questions from this topic of discrete random variables i'll put a playlist over here also um, you can subscribe to my channel from this icon over here and at the top of the card top of the page there will be a card taking to some other you know s1 kind of material Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.